Hey guys, welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast, the only show handcrafted for small business entrepreneurs looking to explode their business. It's time to get your mind right so you can get your grind right. Are you ready? I just was relentless with it. I never gave up. Like I, I was always, you know, I, I pride myself on trying to be a, a, a likable guy or a, a personable individual, and we would just kill him with professionalism. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me on the Quick Talk Podcast. My name is Josh Latimer, and you guys know it. My job is to provide you as much no-fluff, straight-to-the-point, actionable business insights to help your small service business. Today, I get to interview a friend, someone who I've known a couple years. We unfortunately don't get to talk as often as we'd like because we're both building our little miniature empires here in different parts of the world. But let me tell you about Dave Carroll. Dave Carroll is the founder and CEO of a couple different companies. One of them is a software business called Proposal, which is pretty well known in the pressure cleaning and window cleaning space, uh, but it's applicable to lots more, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And But his, his initial claim to fame was a service maintenance company called Lion Share Maintenance in Minnesota. Now, these guys do you know, a half a million bucks in revenue in just about eight months because it gets so frozen up there. Uh, he's got a nice team put together. He started with nothing. He's a self-proclaimed knucklehead, <laughs> is what he <laughs> said when he grew up. He also went to nine high schools. That's a ton of stuff to unpack. But Dave, thank you for taking an hour out of your day to talk to me today. How are you doing? Thank you for having me, Josh, man. It's uh. It's great. Always, always great to uh, to be talking to a guy like you, my man. Well, I, I, I'm a guy that's full of passion, and it's authentic. Like, I genuinely get fired up. When I'm talking to my wife, I'm passionate. When I talk to my kids, I'm passionate. You know, I want my kids to achieve greatness and all this stuff, and none of that has anything to do with money. And I, I like you because you are also a passionate person, like, you get you get caught up in the work that you're doing, and it's not just drudgery for you. You're really trying to build something and to grind and to work and to sweat, and you can take a punch and get back up, and I just respect and appreciate that. Before we even get into the business stuff, I, I really want you to tell the audience a little bit about your backstory. People don't might not know you, and the people that do know you, I don't think they know kind of some of the crazy stuff you went through in your early 20s. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, you know, Dig into that just for a couple minutes and let us know what the heck happened before you started Lion Share Maintenance. Yeah, so uh, I uh, grew up born and raised in St. Paul, Minneapolis, or St. Paul, Minnesota, Twin Cities area. Um, you know, decent, decent upbringing. Parents have been married a couple times each. Got a big family, a lot of, a lot of brothers and sisters on both sides, mostly older than me. As you were saying, um, a self-proclaimed knucklehead, I think, might be a nice way to put it. I, uh, I was on the the wrong side of legitimacy for a uh, a good amount of my teenage life, and then in my early twenties, I ended up. Uh, unfortunately, I was I went to prison for three years from you know some some mistakes that I made, kind of being around the wrong people and. Not quite making the right decisions, so um, I kind of transitioned out of my uh, my trouble phase. It was about twenty four, just going on to twenty five, and then uh, you know, about six eight months after that situation, I really just decided that instead of looking at that old painful life that I was living, I was going to take the energy and drive that I had applied to other facets of my life and decided to really focus on, you know, just being an upstanding member of society and actually <laughs> taking <laughs> taking the things that I was just blessed with um, and applying them to something that I could provide a lifestyle for myself and uh, and my team, the people that the people that are with me now to this day. I get it. I mean, here's the here's a really cool thing. First of all, I appreciate the honesty because so many of us have all kinds of stuff in our past, right? And we don't like to to hang it hang it on the wall and look at it every day. But you know what? We all start with different raw material, right? We all have different home lives, different situations, different influencers. You know, good, bad, and ugly. You know, we all have different childhoods, different personality types, and 
you're really, what you've done here <laughs> is a complete anti-statistic. I mean, you're not supposed to be doing well in business, succeeding, profitable, growing, right? You're mentoring other business owners. You started a software company. You're just ambitious and you're doing all this stuff. And I think a lot of young guys that maybe listen to this will say, you know what? I might not be exactly where I want to be today, but every day is a new day. You can pivot. You can change your mind. You can go in a different direction. And and that's what you've done, right? I, I was I was the same as, as a lot of guys that are, whether you're in the service industry, you you do real estate, you do whatever it is you do for a living, sell cars. It's like at some point in your life, you were told that you were special. Well, the most beautiful thing is the person that told you that they weren't lying. You just have to like embrace what it is that you know about yourself and apply it to to what makes you passionate in your life. I mean, I've been told before, I think kind of, kind of how you touched on Josh, just being, you know, enthusiastic and energetic and just constantly going. I mean, I could lie to you and say that there were times that I wish I had an off switch, but honestly, I'd, I'd probably break it if I had one. Yeah, and I relate to that too. And it's not just uh, lollipops and cotton candy. I don't walk around my house all, you know, super optimistic all the time. That passion goes both ways. And when I'm mad, it's super ridiculously passionately mad. And when I'm happy, it's super passionately happy. And, but I think a lot of people in 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 like either whether it's drugs or they're doing something the wrong way, like if they could just redirect that passion, greatness is available to all of us. I could not agree with you more. Well, let's let's move into business then. I mean, because now, I mean, that was your past. That was a long time ago. You got a family now. You got your companies. You have team members. You have all kinds of stuff going on. Let's talk about lion share maintenance for a minute because with that company specifically, I know you offer a variety of services. You guys specialize in pressure cleaning and flat surface cleaning. But you have kind of a niche where kind of Dave Carroll's deal is that you're kind of the man at locking up good contracts and deals with property managers and associations. Let's take about three minutes and dive into, you know, I want to get some actionable advice for people. You know, how are you getting into those accounts? What are you doing to, to get the deal? Why do people struggle in that area? Yeah, give me some good uh, tips there. I just was relentless with it. I never gave up. Like I, I was always, you know, I, I pride myself on trying to be a, a, a likable guy or a, a personable individual. And we would just kill them with professionalism, whether it was, you know, it, it can be the small stuff. Walking into somewhere with your shirt tucked in as opposed to not tucked in, having a piece of marketing material that you didn't made yourself, that you didn't make yourself, that you had someone else do, or kind of focusing on like, knowing what you're good at and allowing other people to have that time. And that being said, like I would spend money and people said that we were crazy. I, I mean, we, we would spend money on sales stuff or advertising in certain, like the, the multi-unit housing association, local publication. I was doing that in my first year for 1200 bucks a year when I didn't have the money to pay my rent the next month. But it was like, I knew that that was the right decision, that that's the stuff that we wanted to really get involved in just due to the job tickets and the profitability and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I wish I had a secret for you guys. I wish I had some brand new trick, but in reality, I know a lot of guys are into, you know, whether it's reading books or podcasts or any of this stuff, the older the method of sales is, the more likely that it'll work. I've always found that doing things that I'm not comfortable with make me more successful. And something that even being, you know, a personable guy that I wasn't comfortable with was getting on the phone and cold calling or going into someone's office or going to a networking meeting and just talking about what our business does. Now, mm -hmm. in planting those seeds early, we were able to continue to water them and the plant grew and, you know, you know what grows on those plants is money. So we were able to finally like capitalize on a lot of the efforts that we have put in. But I would just say my, my advice to any guys trying to get into commercial work, associations, you know, just that higher dollar stuff, straying away from the residential services, whatever industry it may be that you're in, present yourself in the most professional way possible and then just stay consistent. That's a yeah. that's a good place to be because sales is the lifeblood of any organization. And I, I meet people in both camps. I meet people who are obsessed with the details or obsessed with the office, having their little computer paper nice and neat and all that. And that's not going to get it done. But then there's people that, that go around hustling and selling all day, but their back office is total chaos. So that's also not going to get it done. You got, you got to have balance. But 
Give me 60 seconds. I want to try to unpack what you, you gave us in regards to specifically property managers and associations. This is what I heard. The number one thing I heard early when you started going there was relentless. And uh, that's one of the oldest tricks in the book, right? Being persistent, not stopping, not quitting. Uh, when you try to sell a commercial account, you got to play the long ball. And you don't go in there, stop in for 10 minutes and, and get a $50,000 contract, right? You, it's, it's consistent, persistent relentlessness. Keep circling back. Keep making contact. Um, it's not complicated, but very few people do it. Understanding that getting in front of people and just telling them what you do and explaining to them like, I'm Dave. I'm the doctor. You have a problem. You're my patient. What is your pain? Because I have the solution. There you go. Boom. And the devil's in the details. You know, the little things do matter. The, the the thickness and glossiness of your business card, so to speak, matters. The literature matters. The design of your website, the design of your uh, lettering on your truck, all that stuff ties together and it creates a lot of perceived value. So, you know, focus on the details, guys. Be relentless. And then just, just do the old school way of just, you know, targeting your customers, like Dave said, going after them and staying in front of them. Play the long game. Play the long game for sure. You mentioned uh, your office manager and how that was an unfair advantage because I know <laughs> your office manager isn't just a normal office manager. It's like you're in a relationship with her. You have, a, you know, there's a whole story there. I'll let you tell that briefly. Now, yeah. I had an unfair advantage too in my cleaning business because I had a partner and he would let me focus on the architecture and the big picture stuff while he would focus on the day-to-day -day stuff. And I, literally, I can't put into words how big of a deal that is. And I know everyone doesn't have that. Um, how has that helped you? And, and you know, how thankful for, were you to have someone like that early on in your company's history? I mean, I think even looking back on it, Josh, I'm more and more thankful every day. I, I do have an unfair, fair and unfair advantage because I'm sure I... Those of you out there with significant others, my my office manager and my is also my uh, my better half and my fiance. Um, so it can you know it can at times be be fun working all day together and then trying to attempt to not have that come home with you. But that aside, it's like the best advice I could really give to anyone is just if it's for ten hours a week, all you guys that are out there doing your thing you're out in the field, just how much easier your life would be if you didn't have to answer your own phone and how much more room that gives you to focus on the other aspects of your business. This is not some crazy position that takes forever to train, like whether you could have an aunt, you could have a, a buddy's girlfriend, like it doesn't matter, just transitioning someone in the position to give your to get you have to understand what you're good at you know being being a business owner like you're forced to be self-aware you know what you're good at in your company and you know what you're not good at yeah you you got to live in your own wheelhouse and you can't take a square peg and shove it through a round hole in the early days of every company it's normal that you have to wear all the hats okay but you need to rapidly get yourself out of that position. And here's the mistake I see people make. People think they need to achieve some level of success so that then from that day forward, they can finally you know, get that employer, get that person. And that's not completely true because what you really need to do is make the decision to just bring in another person. Even when you're freaked out, you have that knot in your stomach and you're not sure how you're going to make this work. Because what that does is two things. One, it gets you stopping doing something you're poor at doing. And two, it puts your back squarely against the wall where you got to go sell and produce to make sure that you can cover the payroll for that person. But every time you do that, you're propping yourself up. You're raising up the level of, of, of your company. And you have to surround yourself with competent people. You have to stay in your own wheelhouse. And man, I, I'll tell you, going through the process with my company and what I'm doing now with my software business and my training company, I can't get people around me fast enough. Like there's so much value in assembling a team that it's like the first thing on my list. Like any future projects I have, it, it just, it, you don't need to be a lone wolf. In fact, it's, it's almost impossible to succeed as a lone wolf. And so the importance of team can't be un understated. And if you don't have a team right now, then that's okay. Just make the decision to put someone in place immediately. Put your back against that wall, go out there and sell and, and make it happen. 
Are you looking for a simple way to get more sales, more referrals, and strengthen your customer loyalty? Look no further than sendjim.com. It was handcrafted for you as a powerful tool that will automate your follow-ups after the sale. Imagine being able to stay in contact with your customers all year long by pushing a single button on your smartphone. This is a space age warp speed technology and it will eliminate the chaos inside your business caused by trying to properly follow up with all of your leads and customers. Sign up for a free trial with no credit card required at sendjim.com right now. What are you waiting for? Dave, I, I'm a podcast guy. This is a podcast. I've, I've loved podcasts for years. Uh, I think they're awesome. It's how I consume a lot of my content. What is your uh, favorite podcast that's out there right now? All right, so I... Uh... I'm a Cardone guy. I love Grant Cardone's energy. I love everything that he does. Um, he's got a uh, he's got a Young Hustlers podcast that is amazing. It's 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 just very good. He's the the, the co-host on there is another good guy. That's another. Uh, I think this guy that that does the podcast with him was kind of like a Cardone follower, quote unquote, and then it has worked his way up the ladder to where he works with Grant now. Um, entrepreneur, entrepreneur on fire, of course, uh, been huge. I actually just got put on to that podcast. Yeah. I'm a big John Lee Dumas fan too. Uh, a friend of mine introduced me to that about a year ago and you can binge on those. Uh, oh, yeah. they're really good. It's good stuff. And education is important. And, um, I like that quote. I forget who says it, so I can never give credit, but you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And if you're consuming in it, podcasts all day while you're working um, you're just building yourself up you're sharpening your mind you know you're, you're just pouring into yourself it's a huge thing it's not just entertainment uh, if you just listen to entertainment shows all day uh, I think you're wasting a large part of your your intellectual capital for the day you need to plug into some stuff that's gonna that make you smarter make you sharper push you a little bit give you some fresh ideas um, you know before we wrap things up I want to talk about execution because you had mentioned to me when we chatted last time that you know, one of your strengths is the fact that you you move on ideas. You don't you don't sit there and plan stuff for 27 years and talk about all the the big things that you're going to accomplish, but you put it into play. And it's not about perfection as much as it is just about taking action and, and executing on that. Huge amounts of people do not understand uh, that execution is really the key to growing your business. Do you have anything to add? I, I like to equate uh, population in general to when you're sitting in traffic. So think of wherever you're at in your city, whether it's a metropolis, you're out in the country, whatever, you sit in rush hour traffic. Next time you're in rush hour traffic, just look around. All those people that are sitting next to you in traffic, that's population. There's a $100,000 car next to you. There's a $4,000 car next to you. There's a guy with a job who makes a million dollars. There's a guy with a job that makes $10 an hour. So when I look at population in, in that traffic, I think of like how all of these different people all have a good idea. Every single person that you see when they're driving, that you walk by in traffic, that you deal with on a daily basis, every single one of those, pers- every single one of those people has, if not one, they might have 10 great ideas. What I've always tried to pride myself on is that I execute. Listen up. Now, remember, being self-employed is not the same as being a business owner. And if you are looking for a way to automate your business and build yourself a clear path to the dream that keeps eluding you, then check out my online small business boot camp. It's a go at your own pace. It's power packed. It's a mind bomb. It will help you understand exactly how to architecture out and systematize your small business right now so you can finally be back in control. Go to windowwealth.com right now and check it out. Use the code MINDBOMB to save 30%. It's time to invest in yourself. Imperfect action is always better than perfect inaction. A lot of this, people overthink everything. And you just need to go do stuff. If you have an idea and you don't do anything, who cares? Ideas are a dime a dozen. I I just read a quote on Facebook today. You You can't build a legacy with ideas, right? Your legacy is going to be based on all the stuff that you actually did. <laughs> so if you have an idea, do it. Uh, nothing drives me crazier than when you're hanging out with someone and they'll see like a product in a store or, or something on TV and they go, 
oh, I thought of that 20 years ago. Well, that that's literally <laughs> meaningless to me. The, the other guy thought of it, built it, tested it, got financed for it, sold the account, got distribution for it, and now he's getting rewarded for it. And you're pretending in your brain that you're on the same level as that guy? I mean, how deluded are people? So it's it's just totally crazy. Insane. As we wrap it up here, Dave, this has been really, really good, really good stuff. I've enjoyed it. I want to talk about Proposal a little bit. Uh, basically, my understanding of Proposal is it's it's software for anybody in a, that, that bids on stuff or gives quotes, right? So if you go out and you give quotes to someone, Proposal is a software as a service. It's a web-based tool that allows you to give really, really cool, high-level professional quotes in a super simple way. Like you configure it up front and then you can just bang out these quotes and there's like email tracking and all kinds of crazy stuff. Can you give us like a brief overview on what it is and what it does? Because uh, I think it's applicable to a lot of people listening to this. Definitely. So like <clears throat> the need for proposal um, just came from necessity in my business. I, uh, I was in a position where I was out doing, you know, 10, 15 estimates a day. I'm running around with my my carbon copies. I get to the first job site. I'm taking notes, counting stuff, taking measurements, doing all that great, and snapping some photos, putting that all together, driving to the next job site. End of the day, I got, like I said, you know, whether it's seven, 10, 15 of these things and I'm going back to my office, pulling up Microsoft Word, finding an old template, deleting the old information, uploading my new information, finding the pictures of my phone, getting my insurance together. I mean, every single bid was taking me 45 minutes to put something together that was actually presentable. But what we did with Proposal is we took that 45 minute process and we made it about 60 seconds that you can bang out a 10 page professional custom bid as detailed as humanly possible. If you need to present yourself in the most professional way possible, while being able to stay on top of a to-do list, a follow-up calendar, a scheduling calendar, and work orders, the software that we created caters to, you know, like we've talked about in this podcast so far, your one-man guy who's working on uh, who's working on getting out of the field or bringing on an office manager or up to a guy like me. You know, we're running eight to ten guys in peak season, and we utilize the software, I think, as, any, as much as any one of our users. So... It really just, again, it came from necessity. And uh, well, now one of the it's... coolest The coolest part about it to me is that you looked for a solution. It didn't exist. So you made one. And that's execution. I think it's really cool uh, that you did that. And I know how expensive it is to develop software. And so it's, no, it's not a small thing to build out a tool like this. So I think it's worth checking out for sure. And I know that you have, with your new version that was completely just totally rebuilt from the ground up you're going to have tons of new features like you said the scheduling the google thing um the calendars the work orders all this stuff uh it's definitely worth checking out do you offer a free trial or anything like that dave yes guys we do a 15 day free trial all you got to do is go to www.closethejob.com 15 day free trial and uh you guys are more than welcome to check it out yeah, well, it's a tool. It's a time saver. Uh, we need to spend our time focusing on driving sales, leading our team, coaching, mentoring, and developing. Things like this are, are just a no-brainer for me. You have to invest in tools. Even if proposal is not the right thing for you, in, as a general rule with business, you have to invest in tools to set yourself up to succeed and to win. And you need to assemble just an arsenal of things that leverage your time, multiply your time, make things faster, easier, simpler, help you look more professional to your customer and this is one of those things that falls right in that wheelhouse dave i appreciate your time today from knucklehead to ceo of a software company and, and a really <laughs> good sized maintenance company thanks for hanging out with me today buddy josh i really appreciate it man thanks for having me all right take care hey thanks for hanging out friends and from all of us here at the quick talk podcast team we hope you love today's show we hope that you were inspired to become a doer and not just a listener. Apply what you've heard today in your own business and watch things change for the better. Lastly, remember that all the money in the world can't save your soul. Seek first the kingdom of God, my friends. We'll see you next time. For more information about the Quick Talk Podcast or Joshua's other businesses, visit our website, quicktalkpodcast.com. Have a blessed day.